Before the video begins, make sure you've subscribed to see more natural history content like this. Hit the bell icon to keep yourself in the loop and leave a comment if you feel like it. Brand new designs are up on the Edge Redbubble. Werewolves, spiders, FedEx amphibians, protocrocs, and more. Go check out the Redbubble with links in the description and comment section below. I haven't explored the weird and wild world of the non ceratosaurus grade ceratosaurs on this channel in much detail. This has nothing to do with my lack of interest and everything to do with my lack of time. I can easily put a stop to this lack of non ceratosaur content though, and a brand new paper was just published on a brand new ceratosaur that's so bizarre that it's kicking me into talking about them. Before I start slicing up the new dinosaur cake, I think a short trip through what the hell kind of dinosaurs I'm talking about is required. Especially considering how pretty much each member is completely different from every other. So, one of the big clades of theropod dinosaurs that split off the family tree pretty early was the Ceratosauria. I'm sure the name Ceratosaurus may sound familiar, and that's because of its famous spot amongst the late Jurassic fauna of North America, Portugal, and Tanzania. It belongs, unsurprisingly, to the clade Ceratosauria and family Ceratosauridae. This Ceratosauria clade is super massive and contains a bunch of groups that took off after the Jurassic, while the Ceratosaurus type Ceratosaurs went extinct. Within the Ceratosauria is the group Neoceratosauria, which holds our familiar Ceratosauridae and the horned armored critters, and then a whole new equally gigantic clade, the Abelisauroidea. Carnotaurus is everyone's favorite member of this group. The meat-eating bull is known from one of the most complete, large theropod skeletons ever found, and it provided enormous insight on what these animals were like before the group began to be fleshed out during the 21st century. If we delve into the Abelisauroidea, we'll see that it contains two major groups. One is the Abelisauridae, which contains all the short-skulled, teeny-armed, pebble-skinned, thick-thighed speed demons we all love. And the other group is the Noasauridae, which now includes quite a few critters, but still remains relatively mysterious. The Noasaurids are hard to generally describe because there's a whole parade of different shapes and sizes. There are about 10 critters that have no family to call home yet, and then there are the Elaphrosaurinae group, which are the long-necked, stilt-legged, sometimes toothed and carnivorous, and sometimes beaked and herbivorous dinosaurs. Then you have the Noasaurinae, which are equally bizarre, but contain some more recognizable critters. They were generally carnivorous, fly-trapped-mouthed, super toothy, long-necked, stilt-legged animals with small but not tiny arms. Except for Vesversaurus, which ran around on the enormous middle toe of its foot despite still having the other two side toes. So, now that we have a general understanding of the Ceratosaurs, we now have context for the brand new little munchkin described a few days ago. The remains of this new dinosaur were first uncovered during the field seasons of 2011 to 2015 by a team of paleontologists from the Museo Nacional and the Centro Paleontológico da Universidade do Contestado at the cemetery of the Pterosaurs Quarry, which is in the Goyoere Formation, dating to the early Cretaceous of the Caiua group of the Bauru Basin of Brazil. Now, those bones were taken out of an outcrop of this formation located on a rural road in the Cruzeiro do Oeste municipality of Paraná state in southern Brazil. Those fossils consisted of a nearly complete but disarticulated skeleton with a partial skull and jaw. The bones were given the name Berthasaura leopoldinae, Berthasaura, honoring researcher Bertha Maria Julia Lutz due to her scientific contributions regarding women's rights in Brazil. Leopoldine honors Brazil's first empress, Maria Leopoldina, who helped Brazil achieve independence, and because next year will be her rule's bicentennial. On top of that, the species name also honors a school that was named after the empress and has been involved with the museum that conducted the dig for the new dinosaur. 
I'd say this is uncreative and boring since the name doesn't describe the animal in any way, but I think in this context the honorifics of its name are rightfully earned. No offense to the team responsible for its discovery or description. When all of the fossils were taken back to the museum and fully prepared out of their rocky prison, they assembled an incredibly weird little dinosaur. The skull was short and wide with a cavernous eye socket and robust lower jaw. Even the tongue bone, called the serratohyle, was preserved. It provided structural support for the tongue as well as important throat muscles. It was huge. The lower jaw was tipped by a triangular and blunt beak, as was the upper jaw, but this beak was slightly downturned. The skull was attached to a moderate length neck, which hitched up to a barrel shaped torso. The shoulder bones were thin, but wide, which means the shoulder muscles would have been pretty big and useful. Attached to those shoulders were some of the smallest and weediest little arms you've ever seen. These dinosaurs are known for teeny weedy arms, but this animal's humerus was thinner than its lower arm. The arm also ended in one of the smallest, dumpiest little mitten hands. This thing's hands were smaller than the dumpy little flesh mitten attached to Carnotaurus's teeny arms. I'm sure the whole arm wasn't completely useless, but damn was that hand useless. Beyond the torso was a huge pelvis without any augmented bones. By that I mean that usually herbivorous animals have a pelvis with all its pointy bits jacked backwards to make room for more guts. More guts are better for digesting veggies, especially when those veggies are devoid of nutrition. It's why birds evolved a backwards pointing pelvis independently of the bird hipped dinosaurs. This pelvis shape could indicate something about the animal's diet. Not much of the tail bones were recovered, but those that were don't show anything unusual, just the tail. The legs were long and thin, probably having a lot of muscles to propel the guy away from any danger. The lower legs were largely unpreserved, so not much can be said on them. The place where it was found, the cemetery of the pterosaurs quarry, is a very interesting locality. It first became famous for its, you'll never guess it, pterosaurs. This is the place where they found the mass graves of the Cayuajara and also Keres Dracon. Dinosaurs have been found from this site since the beginning, but have only recently been getting proper descriptions. Another dinosaur found here was Vespersaurus, though Vespersaurus comes out of a slightly younger layer of rock. Vespersaurus is known from relatively fragmentary fossils, leading some researchers to think it may have been a chimera, that is, composed of remains from different animals. The research team describing Berthosaura made sure to compare it to Vespersaurus to make sure they were not the same thing. Thankfully, Berthosaura preserved bones that were also preserved in Vespersaurus, so a good comparison could be made. Turns out they really are two different critters. That being said, they are both Noasaur and Ceratosaurs. The specimen belongs to an immature animal. The research team got to this conclusion because all the bones in the body haven't fully fused. That's usually a good indication of an animal that has yet to fully mature. On top of that, the thing had a comparatively large skull and comparatively large eye sockets. These are also usually seen in young critters. All these traits combined give you a more confident conclusion of a young animal. Each one by itself wouldn't be. As it is immature, it's possible that a fully grown adult may have looked more like Limusaurus with a tiny head and longer neck, but that remains a complete mystery till more are found. What makes Berthosaura really weird is its lack of teeth. This is because most of the Noasauridae have teeth. The ones known from skull material that were toothless was Limusaurus. The big butt comes in with the fact that Lemusaurus only lost teeth and gained a beak at adulthood, with babies and juveniles brandishing some small toofers in their finger nippers. All of this is highly unusual because this entire group of dinosaurs is known for big honkin' knife teeth and didn't really delve into herbivory except in this very unique instance. Meanwhile, the Silurosauria clade of theropod dinosaurs experimented countless times in gaining beaks, losing teeth, and chomping on plants, eventually giving rise to birds and so, so many plant eaters. 
This little guy adds a whole new node onto the knowledge base of these really weird theropod dinosaurs. Maybe someday we'll have a better picture as to how we went from thick-skulled speed demons to these little weedy-armed herbivores. Until then, I welcome our new little friend, Berthosaura. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks goes to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, Chris Frampton, Biotaverse, Arda Bayer, and Christoph Hubbinger, as well as my Tyrannosaur patrons, Iron Bladesman, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.